So I'll move on to sort of the present presenting how to, to do this sort of um, fast coefficient form to evaluation form trick. Um, and I'll present it in a way that's sort of re re uh, relevant to the other things that are done in the in the Fry protocol. Um, but you know, taking inspiration from this, treating the matrix. Um, I mean, essentially, what we've done here, I'll, I'll go back, is instead of viewing these numbers as numbers one, two, three, four, we're, we're, we're definitely viewing them as powers of two, right? So one is two to the zero, two is two to the one, four is two to the three, or sorry, four is two to the two, and three is two to the three. So, you know, basically just taking inspiration from that and seeing that it seems like the, the correct way of sorting these numbers is to sort them as powers of two rather than in the traditional way of going one, two, three, four. It seems like one, two, four, three is a little bit more natural somehow. And so instead of evaluating P of X for some random X or some arbitrary X, let's think about it in terms of evaluating it for X being two to the K for some K. And, and we know that you know for any K, we can get any X that we want basically. So, you know, a, a good thing to, to think about when you're trying to design a, a fast algorithm is what is a good way of breaking the problem down into subproblems, right? This is sort of the, def, the, the, the so-called divide and conquer method, which is very sort of powerful throughout, um, throughout algorithms. If you ever have to write a fast algorithm, the divide and conquer method is probably, it's probably going to be the, the way that you do it. And so, we basically need to find a way of the, the divide and conquer method tells us that if you have a problem, you should try and break it up into similar problems, but of a smaller size. And so what our problem looks like is this polynomial with four, um, four components. So how can we break that up into subproblems which consist of solving the same problem but for polynomials with fewer elements and or, or fewer coefficients and one way that you know might occur to you is that maybe we can take the coefficients from from p right we can take three four or four and one and we can make new polynomials smaller po polynomials out of those coefficients and that turns out to be the critical trick so what I'm actually going to, to show you all how to do here is, is to split this polynomial up into the basically the even polynomial and the odd polynomial. So here I've 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 taken the x cubed part and the x part. Those are x to an odd power, and I've I've written them in blue, and then the 4x squared part and the one part I've I've written in red. And if I rearrange this a little bit, I can put the blue terms next to each other and the red terms next to each other, and I can sort of factor out an x, I see that I sort of have, you know, it's it's really, I have a polynomial here, which is red, and I have another polynomial, polynomial here, which is blue. And the blue polynomial has half the coefficients that the original polynomial did, and the red polynomial has half the coefficients. So this, this seems like it could be a, a good potential way of, of breaking down the problem. And so, let me just define these new polynomials based on uh, based on what we we have here. So I see that I have three and four as the coefficients to my blue polynomial. So I'll call I'll make a new polynomial and I'll, I'll use y instead of x to to make sure to make it clear that you know it's a sort of a di we're we're operating over x squared here, right? It seems like we're operating over x squared here, but um, we want a polynomial that's that's over. If we just want to talk about a polynomial over one variable, we'll, we'll talk about it in terms of p of y, which is equal to three y plus four. And you could think of y as sort of that's going to what's going to stand in for x squared. And similarly, we can have this even polynomial, which is four y plus one. Um, and so the the central idea is going to be that. If we can evaluate these polynomials for all of the powers of two to the k squared, right? Because um, you know, for the original polynomial, we wanted to evaluate it on x equals two to the k. 
for these polynomials, we want to evaluate it on y. And if y is x squared, then we want to evaluate these polynomials on, on powers of 2 to the k squared. And what we'll show is that if we can do that, then we can basically compute p of x on any power we want. We can solve our original problem. So let's see how that works. So we have p to, p to the x. We'll just write that down here. We have our definitions for p odd and p even. And let's say that we have our evaluations for p odd on 2 to the 0 and 2 squared, right? Rather than on all the individual values, we have it on 2 to the 0 and 2 squared. And if we, we do, the, do the math on these, right, we, we get the values 2 for p to the odd on 2 to the 0 and 1 for p to the odd on 2 squared. And similarly, we can work that out for, for p even. Um, we can evaluate p even on 2 to the 0 squared, and we get 0. And we can evaluate p even on 2 to the 2 squared, and we get 2. And I've, I've written these in, in separate colors so that it'll be sort of easy, easier to see what happens next. How can we now evaluate px on an arbitrary value that we want to evaluate it on? So we can take p of 2 to the 0, and if we substitute 2 to the 0 in, we get this expression here. But we see that we have 2 to the 0 to the 2, and that's really just 2 to the 0. And similarly, 2 to the 0 to the 2 here is, is just 2 to the 0. So we can replace this 2 to the 0 to the 2 by 2 to the 0, and that gives us this expression. But now we see that the blue here is just this this exact evaluation here. And similarly, this red evaluation of 4 times 2 to the 0 plus 1 um, is exactly this evaluation here of p to the even or, or p sub even on 2 to the 0. And so it turns out that just using this purple 2 and this orange 0, that's all the data that we need to evaluate p on 2 to the 0. Um, and it turns out to be 2. Now let's do it for 2 to the 1. Similarly, we have 2 to the 1 squared, and we have 2 to the 1 squared here. And that becomes 2 squared and 2 squared. And we see that that, or those two values, are the evaluations of p odd and p even on 2 squared that we computed here. So we have the cyan 1 here and the brown 2 here. And if we substitute those in, we can evaluate p on 2 to the 1, p on 2, which is, um, which is 4. We can then do the same thing for 2 squared. 2 squared squared is 2 to the 4th. And 2 to the 4th is really just uh, the 0, right? If I take 2 to the 4th, that's 16. And 16 mod 5 is 1. So that's the, basically the same as 2 to the 0. One sort of trick that you can think of when you're, you're, when, you know, you're doing um, field arithmetic or modular arithmetic is that the numbers in the bases, right, you can always add or subtract 5 from those numbers. But uh, for, the, for the exponents, you actually add or subtract 4, right, which is sort of the, the totient function. That's just one of those sort of vagaries of, of field arithmetic. So we again get 3 times 2 to the 0 plus 4 and 4 times 2 to the 0 plus 1. These are just the evaluations uh, of the purple 2 and the, the orange 0. And so we again get an expression that just depends on the orange two, or sorry, the, the, the purple two and the orange zero, and, and we can again evaluate um, the polynomial for this particular value. And the same thing happens again for two cubed. Um, we can basically reduce two to the cubed squared to two squared. And that gives us, you know, these evaluations of this odd polynomial and this even polynomial. And so basically, in each case, what we see, what we get is that, you know, we have here alternating uh, purple and cyan down this column. We have alternating orange and brown down this column. And then we also have an additional multiplicative factor, which is just um, 
which is just the input, right? In this case, it's one, two, these are the, just the powers of two. One is two to the zero, two is two to the one, four is two squared, and three is two cubed. And so this is, you know, the sort of basic way in which we, this is sort of a very, um, uh, this is only one sort of step of the process, right? You, you could imagine, you could imagine doing this for a much larger polynomial. And the, the nice thing about this is for, even for a polynomial with potentially millions of coefficients, this process would not take too long because you only have to do about, you know, like only only a couple of million operations in order to evaluate this, right? So, right, p, right, p odd, right? So, like, say, assuming that we already have p odd on all of these values, right, and we already have p even on all of these values, um, these sort of each term in blue here or in red here is already computed. And so all we have to do is for each evaluation that we want to do, we just have to do one multiplication and then one addition in modular arithmetic. So it turns out to be very fast to do this this way. You don't have to do a number of operations, which is going up like the square, which is quadratic in the number, in the size of basically the, the problem that you have, which is, you know, you don't want to be multiplying the entire matrix out. You want the faster way of doing it, which, which is what we have here. Uh, and so, yeah, so just to, to I guess, round out the story on the, the sort of computational, the computational complexity of this problem. We've taken the problem, we've broken it down into two sub, sub problems that are each half of the size. And then we did, you know, an amount of work that was not too much work to combine those answers. And if we had a much larger polynomial, what we could do is we could just keeping keep breaking down the problem, right? We we would break the problem into two problems of half size and then each of those would be broken down into problems of quarter size and then each of those would be broken down into problems of one eighth of the size and so on and that would add some overhead but if you're having the problem at every step you know even a very large number if you if you keep dividing by two you'll very quickly get to one um and so the fact that we are doing this sort of recursion um, only really adds a, a logarithmic factor to the to the size of the problem. And so we end up doing much faster than multiplying out the matrix. And this is, if, if you're sort of familiar with big O notation, this is what's known as n log n time. Um, and really, this is sort of almost equivalent in uh, in spirit to to being able to do something in in linear time. So this is this is definitely, a much you know faster way than the the, the quadratic multiplication and, and it's the only thing that makes it possible to do this when you have matrices that are you know of size uh you know a million by a million um and so that is the that is the number theoretic transform 